When people head to the cinema to see a Mission Impossible film, they are expecting three things. Insane stunts, breathtaking action and Tom Cruise doing Tom Cruise things. From the Burj Khalifa climb to hanging onto the outside of a taking off plane, Tom Cruise has always gone above and beyond to entertain audiences with his commitment to reality. But with the actor having recently turned 61, is he still able to deliver on the audience's expectations for real danger and extreme stunts? In this spoiler-free review, I'll be taking a look at the latest entry into the Mission Impossible franchise and seeing if Dead Reckoning Part 1 doesn't just do enough to satisfy audiences, but also leaves them eagerly anticipating its second part. As always, I recommend you check out this film for yourself before watching, but in the meantime, please enjoy this spoiler-free review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. First of all, I want to praise the writers for coming up with such an intriguing and relevant plotline for this film with its focus on an out-of-control AI cleverly incorporating real-world fears surrounding the issue. From impersonation to infiltration, the rogue military AI calling itself the Entity is always one step ahead of Ethan Hunt. I love the design for the physical form of the Entity, especially when a collection of laser lights make up its visible form in Venice, with its design resembling the all-seeing eye of Big Brother. The threat of the Entity lingers throughout every moment of this film, creating the perfect unseen antagonist for Ethan Hunt to stop. The presence of the Entity is felt further through the introduction of Gabrielle, an enemy from Hunt's past who works as the face of the AI. Gabrielle is portrayed excellently by Asai Morales, who works extremely well as a foil to the impossible mission force. Through his connection to the Entity, Gabrielle always remains a step ahead and maintains the tension of the gripping cat and mouse chase throughout. Without Gabrielle, I don't think the AI itself would have had the same effect on audiences, with a physical presence necessary to sell the more quote-unquote evil side of the program, making Gabrielle a fantastic inclusion in the long run. One last new addition to the cast is Hayley Atwell as Grace, the professional pickpocket that connects Hunt with the Entity. Atwell is excellent and shares some great on-screen chemistry with Cruz, and I look forward to her return in part two, with her character's story filled with many unanswered questions. Grace's arc is never linear, with constant twists and turns leaving the audience guessing throughout, making her an excellent addition to the conspiracy-laden plot. I would be lying if I said that Dead Reckoning Part 1 had one of the strongest scripts of the year, but it simply doesn't need one. This film is able to drive up tension and create stakes where need be, all in service of delivering the cinematic action that audiences came to see, and the writers succeed in keeping the plot moving along at a steady pace for the most part. In terms of raw stunts, Dead Reckoning definitely delivers. Although it featured heavily in the trailers, Tom Cruise driving a motorbike off a cliff before parachuting down was nevertheless breathtaking and a great example of practical effects over CGI. Cruise apparently wrecked six motorbikes filming this stunt, and the end product was definitely worth the expenditure. This stunt is full of trademark Mission Impossible charm, setting up the impossibility of the stunt only to see Hunt overcome it with his typical Tom Cruise flair. Watching Cruise soar over that cliff face before plummeting down towards the earth makes for a thrilling watch and is a trademark example of Mission Impossible action, exactly what audiences have come to see. I won't mention some of the more impressive stunts that were not teased in the build-up to this film, but I will add that the action in this movie never gets boring and never fails to deliver. Despite being one of the stronger entries into the Mission Impossible franchise, this film is not without its flaws. There were points where issues with the pacing threatened to lose me, particularly during the first act, as the action seemed to drag on far longer than necessary. The characters themselves suffer the most from this disjointed action, with Hunt reduced to an unfunny idiot as a means of stretching out a lacklustre car chase. In particular, some of the Italy set pieces just seem to keep going long beyond their natural conclusion, and I feel that the amount of time invested into these earlier scenes could perhaps have been better used elsewhere, fleshing out some of the characters later on in the film. There is also a noticeable lack of music for roughly the first hour, something that took me out of the film a little and left a few action set pieces looking a little awkward. Later in the film, the music takes a massive upturn, with the iconic Mission Impossible theme accompanied by some decent tracks, which makes the earlier lack of music feel even more strange. With some minor tweaks to the first hour, this movie could easily make a case to be the best in the franchise, but it will sadly fall slightly behind my ranking due to a frustratingly messy beginning. I went into Dead Reckoning eager for more signature Mission Impossible action, and for the most part it more than delivered. The stunts are everything an audience expects and more, and the story holds an interesting mirror up to modern society, if a little underdeveloped compared to some of the more thought-provoking sci-fi of the last decade. Any issues I had with the first half of the film were quickly forgotten once this film got moving, leaving me ready for more and eagerly anticipating part two. I'd give this film a 4 out of 5, it knows exactly what it wants to be and it felt like a breath of fresh air off the back of the CGI mess that was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Since the release of Top Gun Maverick, it's felt like Tom Cruise has been on a one-man mission to preserve the art of the cinema, with a commitment to stunning action and incredible practical effects, and Dead Reckoning Part 1 is yet another fun film that will surely fill seats in every cinema. Dead Reckoning was great and I'm left looking forward eagerly to Part 2, but only time will tell if it will deliver.
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this review. It was nice getting to be more positive about a film for once and I hope you enjoyed. If you have your own ideas about the film, as always, feel free to share them in the comments down below. And I hope to see you here again soon.